Screen Directors Playhouse, star Gregory Peck, production The Gunfighter, director Henry King. This is the Screen Directors Playhouse, one of the weekly features on NBC's all-star festival of comedy, music, mystery, and drama. Brought to you by RCA Victor, world leader in radio, first in recorded music, first in television. By Chesterfield, always milder, better tasting, cooler smoking, plus no unpleasant aftertaste. And that's the biggest plus in cigarette history. And by the makers of Anison, for fast relief from the pain of headache, neuritis, and neuralgia. <laughs> Tonight, the Screen Director's Playhouse is pleased to present a dramatic story of the Old West. Our adaptation is The Gunfighter, and our star is Gregory Peck. And now, ladies and gentlemen, here is Mr. Gregory Peck. The breathless excitement of the Old West, when only the smallest fraction of a second stood between breathing and lying still, has been slowly blended by civilization and progress until all that is left are wide open spaces, incredible sunset and cowboy songs which still tell the fable of those golden days, the days of the gunfighter. Thank you, Gregory Peck. And now an important word from RCA Victor. Jan Pierce, the great Metropolitan Opera Company tenor, doesn't sing a single note on RCA Victor's exciting new release, What is a Boy? Instead, Jan Pierce's What is a Boy is one of the most unique and heartwarming recitations ever recorded. It's the sentimental story of a boy. A story that captures all the excitement of growing up. And RCA Victor has recorded it for you in all three record speeds. 78, long play, and 45. Now you can make it a part of your record collection. These words and this music you'll want to hear again and again. What is a boy is a wonderful story. Beautifully delivered by Jan Pierce and set in a soft background of music composed and conducted by Hugo Winterhalter. Yes, what is a boy is a hit. Stop in at your record dealers as soon as you can and hear it. Stop in at your record dealers as soon as you can, hear it, and buy this superb recording by RCA Victor. <laughs> And now, the first act of the Screen Director's Playhouse presentation of The Gunfighter, starring Gregory Peck in his original role of Ringo. This is the story of the great Southwest of the 1890s. A solitary horseman rides slowly over the desert plain. This is Jimmy Ringo. Jimmy Ringo, a name which strikes terror into most that hear it. Jimmy Ringo. Not as young as he used to be. Not as full of fire and venom. Notorious, but tired. As his equally tired horse brings him to the door of the gem saloon in an absolutely gemless cow town of the early West. Give me a drink. Say, why, you... Just give me the drink, will you? You bet your life, Jimmy. It's nice to see you again. Thanks. Remember the old buckhorn in Paso? 
Uh, you worked there? Five years ago when Tim O'Leary had it. Mm. You see me there? Why, sure, all the time. I even remember what brand of whiskey you drink. Why, I can remember the time you were in the bar. Know who that is? Who? Jimmy Ringo. Well, what do you know? He don't look so tough to me. Well, if he ain't tough, there's been an awful lot of sudden natural deaths in his vicinity. How many, you figure? Ten, twelve, fifteen. Depends on who's telling it. That he ain't as fast as Wyatt Earp. In Dodge City and places like that, they say he is. He's got just two hands like anybody else. Well, same number, it looks like, but... Now, wait a minute, Eddie. Eddie, you ain't thinking about anything foolish, are you? You mean he's so tough I can't even talk to him? I mean, this ain't no joke, son. That's a real mean man there. I just want to see how a big, important fellow like that handles himself, that's all. What's wrong with that? I'm telling you, Eddie, I wouldn't do it if I was you. How about a little service here, Chuck? If Mr. Frazzlebottom, or whatever his name is, don't object. Uh, sure. Say, uh, don't you know who that is? You mean it ain't Mr. Frazzlebottom? It's Jimmy Ringo, Eddie. Looks like Mr. Frazzlebottom to me. <laughs> Did you ever see anybody a kid like him, Jimmy? <laughs> How about a drink, Mr. Frazzlebottom? No, thanks. How's that, Mr. Frazzlebottom? Eddie, please. Please what? I asked the man to have a drink with me. What's wrong about that? How about it, Mr. Frazzlebottom? Okay, partner. <laughs> I knew Mr. Frazzlebottom wasn't going to pass up a free one. Don't you understand? It's Jimmy Ringo. All right, so it's Jimmy Ringo. So what's everybody supposed to do, fall down on the knees? Just be a little polite, that's all. Hey, Mr. Ringo. Chuck figures you got a little extra consideration coming to you around here. That right? Nope. How's that, Mr. Ringo? Have to speak up if you want me to hear you. Why don't you button up your britches and go home? How'd you like to try to make me, Mr. Ringo? Now, listen, partner. I come in here minding my own business. Now, how about letting me go out the same way? I want to know first what you meant by that remark you passed. I'll tell you what. You bought me a drink. Now, I'll buy you one, and then let's drop it. What do you say? Give him a drink. Never mind the drink. I want to know what you meant by that remark you passed. Listen, Eddie. I ain't talking to you. I'm talking to Mr. Ringo. I want to know what he meant by that remark he passed. Oh, come. I got to run into some squirt like you nearly every place I go these days. What are you trying to do? Show off in front of your friends? Are you ready to back that remark up or not? Now, what about this, you fellas? You see me standing here, minding my business with a drink in my hand, not even looking at this. What's the matter? Ain't some of you fellas in charge of this donkey? I'm telling you, Mr. Ringo. Uh, Eddie don't mean no real harm. Then let Ringo. Eddie keep his big, ugly nose out of my business if he don't want to get it slapped. Why, you... Don't... You see that barkeep? Yes, sir. He started his draw first. You fellas see it? Yeah, you know first, all right. Except I'd get on out of town anyway if I was you. Why? Because he's got three brothers who ain't going to care who drew first. All right. Everybody stay where you are. He had that drink in his right hand all the time. Never spilled a drop. What a draw. And with his left. Tracks look mighty fresh. Watch careful through these rocks. Bring the wind very far ahead. You're right. Huh? Drop those guns. Like. Oh. Oh. I told you to drop them. All of you. Now get down off them horses. Move over that way. Now get. Yeah! <laughs> You're not going to leave me out here hurt like this, are you? You don't walk on your hands. That's all that's hurt. You got about three hours' walk to Santa Fe, and I'll get going. Santa Fe is no further than Cayenne. And I'd rather be walking toward you, Ringo. Suit yourself. I'm warning you. We're going to get you. I know. 
I heard that before, too. You didn't have no right to throw down on a boy like that. What was I supposed to do? Stand there and let that little boy shoot me full of holes? He wasn't no more than a kid. I said get going. And thanks for the guns. Remember, Ringo, you just got three hours to live. Give me a drink. You up early or out late? Either way you want it, partner, just so I get the drink. Why, Jimmy Ringo. Where was it with you? A Vince Saloon in Dodge City. You and Bucky Harris used to come in there nearly every night. Don't you remember? Did we ever get a drink? Hmm? Oh, sure, Jimmy. I'm sorry. What about something to eat? You got a cook around here? Sure. Got an old woman back there. What do you want? Some eggs? Got a steak? Yeah, we got a steak. I'll take a steak and some eggs and a pot of black coffee. What about a place to wash up first? Right in the back room. I'll show you. Never mind. I can find it. You get them vittles on the fire. Right away. Archie, put on that stick horse and run and get the marshal. Tell him Jimmy Ringo's here and hurry. All right, where is he? Now, look, I ain't after any trouble, Mark. I just thought you'd want to know he was here. Where is he? In the back room? Yeah, he's uh, getting cleaned up. All right. Now, take it easy, boys, and don't try to jump. Hiya, Jimmy. Mark. Well, I'll be a son of a gun. Hiya, partner. I'm fine, Jimmy. What, what are you wearing there? Are you joking? No. I'm the marshal here now. Well, I'll be darned. And these idle barroom loafers, they your deputies? Uh-huh. Well, then you don't need them. I ain't starting anything. You sure? It's the last thing I want, Mark. Trouble. All right, boys. What are you doing here, Jimmy? Marshal Mark Strett. Now, that's really a good one. But I'm glad for you, Mark. Mighty glad for you. Thanks. But I'm afraid I'm going to have to ask you to move on, Jimmy. Why? I ain't wanted for anything around here, am I? No. I just want you out of town anyway. And pronto. Well, I'm afraid I can't accommodate you this time, Mark. Not pronto, anyways. I don't want to have to insist, Jimmy. Look, I'm glad to get a chance to talk to you anyway, Mark. I got something I want to talk to you about. It looks to me like you've got a gossip on your staff. That's your public, Jimmy. Yeah. I'm a big man now. Well, that's what you wanted, wasn't it? Top gun in the West? Yeah. Now I guess I got more people wondering when I'm going to get killed than any other man in the country. You don't seem as happy about it as the last time I saw you. How many is it now, Jim? Eleven? Twelve. There's one you ain't heard about yet. You really keep count? Oh, don't ask dumb questions, Mark. Well, what's the trouble now, Jimmy? Somebody after you? Three somebodies. The law? No, this is personal. There's a kid in a bar last night that wanted to be the man that killed Jimmy Ringo. These are his brothers. How far behind you figure? Let me take a look at that clock. Uh, 11 o'clock. A little under three hours now. You mean they'll be here about two, huh? How come you can figure that close? I sort of arranged it that way. Well, I don't want him to catch up with you here, Jimmy. I don't want him to catch up with me anywhere. That's why you've got to move on right away. Look, you know why I come here, don't you? I guess I do. How is she? She's fine. Yeah. And the boy? Getting on fine. I want to see her, Mark. You think she wants to see you? I got something important to see her about, and then I'll clear out. Now, where will I find her? I'm afraid I can't tell you that, Jim. What do you mean you can't tell me? All right, then, won't tell you. Because nobody here knows who she is, Jimmy. She's never even told the boy about you. They got another name and another life now. And it looks to me like... Well, like that's the way she wants it to stay. How'd you find out she was here? I've always known where she was, ever since she left me. Well, will you tell me what name she's going under? So I can write. Nope. Won't tell you that either. 
Looks like you've taken quite a lot on your own responsibility, ain't you, Mark? I'm doing what I think is right, Jimmy. And I'm hoping I could make you see it that way, too. How'd you like to see that street out there full of gunplay, Mark? I'd rather not. Well, that's probably what you're going to have a couple of hours from now. Because I ain't leaving here till you get a hold of Piggy for me. Look at that crowd out there peeking in these windows. You think it's possible she don't already know you're here? That ain't what I'm talking about. I want to see her and talk to her. And what if she don't want to talk to you? You let her do the deciding about that. Will you go then if I tell her? I told you I would. All right. I'm going to tell her, Jimmy. Just tell her. I'm not going to make her do one thing about it if she don't want it. That's all I want, Mark. All I ask is you just leave it to her. And now, here's a word for discriminating smokers. You see it in the newspapers. No unpleasant aftertaste. You hear it on the radio. No unpleasant aftertaste. You see it on television. No unpleasant aftertaste when you smoke Chesterfields. It's the biggest plus in cigarette history. Science discovered it. You can prove it. Science discovered that of all brands tested, Chesterfield, and only Chesterfield, leaves no unpleasant aftertaste. Prove it yourself. Smoke a pack of Chesterfields. They're always milder, better tasting, cooler smoking. And Chesterfield is the cigarette that leaves no unpleasant aftertaste. That's the biggest plus in cigarette history. No unpleasant aftertaste. Science discovered it. Prove it yourself. Buy Chesterfields today. And now the second act of The Gunfighter, starring Gregory Peck. Seemed to me like I sat in that saloon for hours. I kept looking at the clock on the wall and wondering how the three brothers were making out on foot through that blazing desert. I couldn't figure they could make it before 2 p.m., but it was getting on. Still no sign of Mark. The mob outside kept growing. It seemed like all the kids in the world were peeking in through the windows. I felt like some kind of a freak. But I knew I'd asked for it. I always wanted to be a famous tough guy. Famous... Well, famous, infamous, there was that crowd out there waiting to get a look at me. And always some young squirt among them with two guns on his hip itching to get a crack at Jimmy Ringo. And the door opened and Mark walked in, alone. Nothing doing, Jimmy. She says she's sorry, but that's all there is to it. Did you tell her it was important? I told her exactly what I told her. And I offered to fix it up for her on the quiet if she wanted to see it. What else? What else what? You sure you didn't talk against me? Who's asking the dumb questions now? Well, didn't she give no explanation at all? What explanation could she give that you don't already know? I could just talk to her for a few minutes. How does she look, Mark? Oh, just about the same, I guess. A little older, but just as pretty. Did Did you see the kid? No, no, he's on the loose today. What have you been on the loose? Well, you see them kids outside? Yeah. He's one of them. Well, that's a fine way to bring up a kid. Hanging around in front of a saloon. Ain't you even got a school around here? Yeah, sure we got a school. But you broke it up, partner. They all come down to see Jimmy Ringo, the big gun, the great hero. Does my kid think I'm a kind of a hero? Nope. 
As a matter of fact, I understand he's a Wyatt Earp man. Earp? Well, you ought to taught him better than that. Me? And where was you all the time? Well, that's it, Jimmy. Will you be moving on now? Well, I guess so. I'm sorry it had to be like this, Jimmy. No, that's not your fault. Watch yourself, partner. If I write to her, will you give her a message? You bet. Thanks, Mark. I'll be seeing you, Jim. Well, I hope so, partner. Don't lay no money on it. So long. How much do I owe you, Mac? No charge, Jimmy. It's an honor to have you. Oh, thanks. And don't grab this from your wife. <laughs> I won't. It's been an honor and a pleasure, Jimmy. My horse ready? Ready and waiting. I'll just go out and make sure. I'll go with you. Uh, back way, Mac. All right. Hey! Oh, I'm sorry. Molly! <laughs> Oh, Molly Harris. Jimmy, I didn't know you were here. Well, take a look outside. You must be the only one in town that didn't. I work late, so I sleep late. Work? Where do, where do you work? Here. What do you mean, here in the saloon? I'm a singer, Jimmy. You heard of singers, haven't you? Don't you want to buy me a little drink, honey? <laughs> I, I don't get it. Why, Molly? You got to live, haven't you? Yeah, but where's Bucky? Yeah. You, you didn't hear you what? Bucky was killed in Abilene six months ago. No, I didn't hear. I'm sorry, Murray. Who did it? I don't know. They found him in an alley, shot through the back of the head. Well, didn't he... Didn't he leave you anything? Mm-hmm. A horse and a saddle, two guns and fifteen dollars. He's the biggest gun of them all. Yeah, that figures... I never heard a word about it, Molly. Have you seen Peggy? No. Do you? When I can. But uh, it doesn't do a school teacher any good to be seen with a palace girl, you know. Molly. Yeah? I... I want to ask you something. Sure, Jim. Peggy wouldn't see me. Is it somebody else? Ah, oh, you ought to know better than that, No, Jimmy. I don't. It's been a long time. There'll never be anybody else for Peggy. Has anybody else tried? Well, of course. Pretty girl like that. But a fellow around here named Hunt Bromley got after her. A no-good barroom loafer who thought she couldn't take care of herself. You should have heard her tell him off. What did he do to her? Ah, nothing, not really. You know, just one of those loud mouths trying to move in on a woman without a husband. You know the kind. Yeah. You, you see Jimmy, too? Whenever I see her. <laughs> What, what kind of a boy is he? Oh, he's a good kid. Peggy takes real good care of him. Yeah. What is he? Is he big or little? Oh, he's big. About right for eight. Eight and a half. <laughs> Look, Jimmy, do you want me to go talk to Peggy? No, Mark already talked to her. She said no. Let me talk to her, hmm? Let me see what time it is. It's one o'clock. Why, are you in some kind of a hurry? Well, yeah, but... You think there's a chance I'll stick around a little while longer anyway? You wait here. I'll get her for you. Well, don't take long. I'm a little behind schedule already. I won't be long. Morning, Molly. Out of my way. <laughs> Rye. Rye coming up, hon. Hey, since when do I have to drink secondhand whiskey here, Mac? Well, that's the brand you always drink, hon. Now, this whiskey's been watered. No, it ain't. You know I don't water my whiskey. I've never done that in my whole life. If I say it's watered, Mac, it's watered, and I'm going to prove it to you. You give everybody in this room a drink out of that same bottle, and let's see what they got to say about it. Hunt, there ain't a thing in the world the matter with that whiskey. You heard what I said, Mac. And don't forget the gentleman sitting over there at that table alone. I'd like to have his opinion, too. Oh, well, please, Hunt, let's don't have no trouble here Yeah, now. give me that bottle. I'll go ask him myself. Hey, I want you to settle a little argument, Mr. Ringo. Why should I? Well, you've got quite a reputation for settling arguments, haven't you? Only my own. Well, you could say this one included you in a way. I say Mac here waters his whiskey. And you're kind of dumb to drink here, ain't you? I'll pour you a drink and then you tell me what you think. You needn't trouble yourself. I got my own bottle. You ain't very sociable, are you? Maybe if you get to know me a little better. I don't have to know you any better. Looks to me like there's a squirt like you in every town in the West. 
Now, get away from here. That's kind of strong talk, ain't it, Mr. Ringo? You're Hunt Bromley, ain't you? Yeah. Hey, you heard of me already? Yeah, I heard of you. I heard you were a cheap, no-good barroom loafer. If I didn't have something else in my mind, I'd take that gun away from you and slap you cross-eyed. You're asking for trouble, Mr. Ringo. Well, you already got it, partner. Because I got a gun on you under this table. Pointing smack at your belly. Now, you're going to get out of here or not? I'm kind of disappointed in you, Mr. Ringo. I heard a lot about you around here. I guess they forgot to tell us about that gun under the table. Well, the older you grow, the more you learn, son. Now, you just turn around and head for the door. Keep moving. And don't do anything sudden with your hands. Be seeing you, Mr. Ringo. All the way outside, Sonny. I'm sorry, Jimmy. He's he's only a fresh kid. Yeah, I know, Mac. There's one in every town. They all want to grow up by killing Jimmy Ringo. Uh, you can put that gun away now, Jimmy. What gun's that, Mac? All I got in my hands is this little pocket knife. <laughs> <laughs> and then you should have seen our big tough boy turn tail. Ringo bluffed him with only a knife. Mac, he talked too much. <laughs> Did he scare you a little, Hunter? You lay off me, Mac. You better get dry behind the ears, huh? And you keep your mouth shut. <laughs> Bluff with a jackknife. Mac, I warn you, you shut your big mouth. <laughs> How'd you like to see Ringo and Wyatt Earp square off at each other? Brother, I wouldn't want to be in the same town when that happened. No, why don't you <laughs> fellas shut up? I gave him a chance to show how good he was, didn't I? And I still say he's yelling. Took a lot of nerve, though, to bluff like that with you standing there wearing two guns. What would you have done? Looked under the table? <laughs> I wouldn't have been there in the first place. <laughs> He's the one that ducked out on his showdown, not me. I'm late. Yeah? I want to talk to you. Come on. I'll be over when I get the time. You'll come now. Who says? If I see one of your hands even twitch... I'll crush your head just like an egg. Now get going. You wouldn't dare say that to me if you carried a gun. I don't need a gun. Come on. How come you went in over there and tried to pick a fight with Ringo? You don't have to worry about me, Pappy. I can take care of myself. (laughs) I wish I had a hundred dollars for every blabbermouth I've heard say that. He's yellow. I learned that much anyway. All right, then, Buffalo Bill. I see it ain't no use to warn you, so I'm going to tell you. Either I'm going to lock you up in a cell until he's gone, or you're going to get out of town for the rest of the day. Now, which is it going to be? Me get out of town? What about getting him out? When you're the marshal, you can do the deciding. Meanwhile, you let me handle the job, huh? Now, what do you like, the cell or the road? Looks like you're being mighty careful about that killer. I just don't want any great, big, terrible men like you scaring them to death. How long you known, Ringo? You want to be locked up? No. Then get going, south. And I don't want to see you back around here before sundown. You understand? Who's going to make me, softy? If you ever call me that again, I'll take your little pistol away from you and make you eat it. Don't you ever try that, Mark. I won't try. I'll do it. Now get going. Jimmy. Here, Mark. Mark. I'm sending a deputy over here to sit with you. I got to follow your young friend out of town. Oh, Bromley. Yeah. I'm going to keep peace here today if I have to lock up every gunny in town. Now, my deputy's name is Charlie, and he's going to sit here with a rifle across his knees. Let him in. All right, Mark. I won't interfere with justice. Tell him to come in and have a drink. Can you do anything about that mob outside the window? Well, why don't you make a speech? They're all here to see you. If that don't work, I'll get your deputy to shoot him. It's after one o'clock. I want you out of here before two, Jim. I got no business letting you stay here this long. I, uh, 
I saw Molly. And if Peggy wants to change her mind, you got five minutes. Understand? Fair enough, Mark. Thanks. I don't think those three brothers will give me any more time anyway. You'll be lucky if they give you that much. You shoot this one out, Jim, someplace else. No matter what you now take for headache relief, we urge you to try Anison for the incredibly fast relief these tablets bring the next time you're suffering from a headache. Now, the reason Anison is so wonderfully fast-acting and effective is this. Anison is like a doctor's prescription. That is, Anison contains not just one, but a combination of medically proven active ingredients in easy-to-take tablet form. Thousands of people have received envelopes containing Anison tablets from their own dentist or physician, and in this way discovered the incredibly fast relief Anison brings from pains of headache, neuritis, or neuralgia. So the next time a headache strikes, take Anison for this wonderfully fast relief. Anison, A N A C I N. Anison at any drug counter in handy boxes of twelve and thirty. Economical family-sized bottles of 50 and 100. You are listening to the Screen Director's Playhouse, one of the weekly features on NBC's All-Star Festival. Brought to you by RCA Victor, world leader in radio, first in recorded music, First in television, by Chesterfield, always milder, better tasting, cooler smoking, plus no unpleasant aftertaste. And that's the biggest plus in cigarette history. And by the makers of Anison for fast relief from the pain of headache, neuritis, and neuralgia. The Screen Director's Playhouse presentation of The Gunfighter, starring Gregory Peck, will continue in just a moment after a brief pause for station identification. This is the Screen Director's Playhouse. We continue with the third act of The Gunfighter, starring Gregory Peck in his original role of Ringo with Wally Mayer as Mark Strett. So I waited. Sitting there in the palace bar, I felt like I'd been there for years. Knowing that those three brothers were getting closer to town every minute. I didn't want to make any trouble, but I couldn't figure any other way of getting out of town without shooting my way out once they'd arrived. Well, I stood it as long as I could. And then I told Mark's deputy to take me out the back way and around to the marshal's office. I decided to wait for Mark or Molly or Peggy or whoever came first over there. I had to get out of that saloon. The deputy left me alone, and I sat at Mark's desk. Oh, where is he? Oh, uh, beg pardon, ma'am? Where is the marshal? I am Mrs. August Pennyfeather. Oh, uh, how do you do, Mrs. Pennyfeather? The marshal ain't here now. I I don't know just where he is. I will wait. Yes, ma'am, do. Uh, won't you have a chair? Uh, who are you, uh, deputy? Uh, no... Oh, just a friend. He uh, wouldn't be over there in the saloon arresting that murderer, would he? Well, no, ma'am, I don't think he is. Well, doesn't he intend to? That I couldn't say, ma'am. I ain't sure just what he's going to do about it. Well, he'd better be making up his mind pretty soon. This is not Deadwood or Tombstone. This is a law-abiding community, and we want no murderers running wild through our streets, shooting and killing our women and children. Well, 
He ain't exactly running wild through the streets, ma'am. Well, he's a murderer, isn't he? Is he? What else did they tell? After all those killings. Well, I, I mean... It, well, maybe he don't think he is. And he must be a fool, too. I'm just guessing you understand, lady, but maybe he figures it was either him or them. What do you mean, him or them? I mean, maybe there was some uh, misunderstandings and it was either him or them that was going to get killed. Fifty misunderstandings in a row? Oh, not fifty, ma'am. Nowhere's near it. But it was a lot nearer fifteen than fifty, and I can tell you that for a fact. What are you trying to do? Take up for him? Oh, no, ma'am. No, indeed. No, indeed. No, 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 not me. Well, then, don't you think something ought to be done about it? Absolutely. He ought to be arrested or, or run out of town or something. He ought to be hung. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am, there's a lot to be said for that point of view, too. Good morning, Mrs. Pennyfeather. Good morning, Marshal. Well, you're late. Late? Yes, ma'am. I kind of figured you'd be around here long before now. Uh, what do you intend to do about the man? Uh, nothing, ma'am. You're going to allow him to sit right there in that saloon as long as he pleases demoralizing the whole town? Well, now, ma'am, the trouble so far ain't been him demoralizing the town. It's the town demoralizing him. He ain't done nothing. I am here simply to remind you, Marshal Strett, that it is your sworn duty to keep peace in Cayenne. That's right, ma'am, and that's what I'm aiming to do to the best of my ability. Moreover, speaking for the ladies of Cayenne, I am forced to tell you that I regard it as an outrage that this man, Ringo, a notorious murderer, should be received here practically with honor and allowed to sit in state in our finest saloon. <laughs> so now, Mr. Marshall, I demand that you do something about it immediately. Such as what, ma'am? Either arrest him or chase him out of town. Well, now, just a minute, Mrs. Pennyfeather. Uh, Mr. Mr. What do you think? Me? Yeah, you. Well, he's planning to leave anyway, ain't he? Well, that's the way I understand it. What do you figure would happen if I tried to chase him out? I don't think you could do it and keep the peace at the same time. Uh, yes, that's what I thought. Well, can't you arrest him? Well, he ain't done nothing here to be arrested for. Well, isn't he wanted? Not by me, ma'am. Uh, I'm just a stranger here myself, ma'am, but if you was to ask me, I'd say hold off for another hour. Don't do anything that might make trouble for that long. And if he ain't gone by then, then let the marshal go to work on him. Uh, shoot him down like a dog. Exactly, ma'am. <laughs> that sounds very sensible. I think I can get the rest of the ladies to agree. That all right then, Mrs. Pennyfeather? Yes, it's fine. That's the way we'll have it. Thank you very much, Marshal. That's a very reasonable, intelligent idea. Oh, don't thank me, ma'am. Thank Mr. Ringo. Oh, but of course. Thank you very much, Mr. Ringo! Oh! Oh! What are you doing here, Jimmy? I couldn't stand that saloon anymore. I'm waiting for Molly. She said she'd talk to Peggy. I know, I know. She's over there now. You know the clock's still ticking, don't you? Yeah, I know. You know, those three guys could have picked up three horses, don't you? Yeah, I thought about that. Well, you better think about getting out of here. I'll be all right. It's two o'clock. I still got seven minutes. I hope so. I hope you ain't miscalculated any. Now, get out this back door and back to the palace. If Molly has convinced Peggy to see you, it better be fast. <laughs> Drink, Jimmy. No, thanks, Mac. Well, it don't look like anything's going to happen for you, Jimmy. I'm going to give her till the last minute. You don't want to draw it too close, you know. I got to hear something, Mark, no matter how close I draw it. Well, if Molly ain't back pretty soon, you ain't going to be here to hear anything. Molly told me about Bucky. I never heard it before. I guess he never knew what hit him. Yeah. It's a fine life, ain't it? Just trying to stay alive. Not really living, not enjoying anything, not getting anywhere. Just trying to keep from getting killed. That's what Bucky used to say. Just waiting to get knocked off by some tough kid just like the kind of kid I was. And the truth of the matter is it don't pay much either. Here I am, 35 years old, and I ain't even got a good watch. How'd you get out of it, Mark? Well, I... I just quit. Ah. Ain't that easy. How'd you do it, really? 
You remember when the gang split up after that bank job in Medina? Uh, we didn't split up, they scattered us. Well, anyway, some of us put into Prairie City to get some supplies. But the word was ahead of us, and you should have seen what we walked into. Yeah, I heard. Did you hear about the little girl? No. I I got sick when I saw her. Oh. Who did it? Who knows with all that shooting? Could have been me just as well as anybody else. Well, you, you don't know that. It don't matter. I was there. So when we got back to the hills, I just kept her going. And I kept on going until I got here and asked a man for a job. Well, didn't anybody ever say anything? I wasn't as prominent as you are. Funny. What? Well, that was the time I could have kept on going, too. Yeah, I could have rode right on back to Peggy. I used to wonder about going back and giving myself up. But I finally argued myself out of that one, thank goodness. Mark, I'm glad for you. Ain't gonna make any more trouble for you either. Not much use in my waiting around here anymore. Well, you can write to me and I'll give it to her if you want. Uh, wouldn't do any good. She's got her mind made up now. No place she could reach you, I reckon. No. I don't know where I'm gonna be. So long, Mac. Your horse is ready outside, Jimmy. Good luck. Thanks, Mark. Jimmy. Mark. Wait here. You... You look fine, Peggy. I'm doing all right. I... I came here just to see you, you know. I know. Mark told me. But I just didn't know what to do, Jim. Well, it's all right now. How's Jimmy? He's a lot like you, I'm afraid. Well, don't you think you better do something about that right quick? Oh, I was just joking. He's a little wild like all kids. But he's a good boy. Did you know he's out there in front right well, now? I've taken him away once, but it looks like the whole town's crazy today. I, I never saw anything like it. I, I looked out there at him, but I, I couldn't see no kid that looked like me. Oh, he, he's still there, I'm afraid. But Mark or Molly tell you what I want. No. I want to get away from here, Peggy. I want to get out of this part of the country. See if we can't find us a, a little ranch, maybe. You and me and Jimmy. I wish you'd thought of this before. Oh, we can still do it, honey. I could go on out to California or the Northwest where they ain't never heard of me before. See if I couldn't find us a little place. Then you and Jimmy could pack up and come on out there later. Why, they would never know who we were. We could be safe out there the rest of our lives. When did you get this idea, Jim? Well, I didn't get it. It just kind of come over me. The way getting older comes over you. All of a sudden, you look at things different than the way you did five years ago. All of a sudden, I knew this was the only thing in the world I wanted. You and me and Jimmy. Together on a little place somewhere. Oh, it's a wonderful idea, Jim. It's wonderful, but... But it's no use. Why not? It's too late. Why? Mark done it. Eight years ago, but you could not now. You're too well known. Listen, Jim, the only reason Mark doesn't arrest you is that he's Mark and you're his friend. But you can't depend on things like that forever. And one of these days, the federal officers will pick up your trail and that'll be the end of it. I'll never give up, not as long as you live. Well, what about South America? We can meet in New Orleans, get on a boat and... What? What's the matter, Peggy? Don't you love me? You don't have to ask me that, Jim. I've changed, you know. I'm different now, Peg. I just want to be somewhere. Don't you understand? Oh, look, darling, if it were just you and me, I, I'd do it. I'd go with you this very minute anywhere in the world you wanted to go. It's not just you and me. There's Jimmy, too. Oh, we can take him with oh, no, us. No, Jim, no. No, we could run and hide and dodge the law all the rest of our lives, but not a little boy like him. He wouldn't understand. Don't you see? Jimmy! Give me another minute, will you? It's late. It's all right, I tell you. I've got plenty of time. They're walking. Looks like they must have been running some. Three strangers walked into the palace, asked where you were, walked out, and nobody's seen them since. Look like brothers. Oh. All right, just one more minute. Somebody's after you. Never mind that. Listen, 
A year from now, if I come back, if I've been all right the whole year, will you talk to me about it again? No, Jim, it's no use. It's too late. Just talk to me, that's all. Maybe you'll feel different. Something might have happened. Nobody knows what can happen in a year. You've got to say you'll talk to me about it again. Hear me! I will. Oh, we can make it, honey. We can make it. You just wait and see. All right, where are you, Grandma? Now, look, Jimmy. Now, you listen to me, Mark. I've got to have five minutes more. I want to see my kid. With three guys in town looking for you? Oh, no, Jim, you can't do that. I'm sorry, but my mind is made up. So get him, honey. I don't care how you do it, but get him. I won't move. Bring him right here to this room. What are you trying to do? Mess up the kid's whole life, too? I ain't trying to mess up anything. I just want to see my kid. But how can I fix it so he won't know? You can do it, honey. You'll think of something. But I ain't leaving until I see him alone. Me and him, right in this room. I don't care if there's 300 brothers hit all over town. Can you hurry it up, Peg? I'll try. All I know is it's been eight years since I've seen my own kid. And it ain't going to be another eight years before I see him again. I'm sure glad you don't drop into town every morning. Now, look. I'm walking out of here. And when I walk back in, you're leaving town. Forget you ever saw me before. The next time I come in, you're looking at the Marshal of Cayenne. Bust into a room like that. Nobody. Well, don't ever do it again. You knock first and wait till somebody answers. You understand? Yes, sir. Now shut the door. Yes, sir. Are you really Jimmy Ringo? Sure I am. What makes you think I'm not? You didn't draw when I kicked in that door. Draw on an unarmed man? Never did that in my life. You gotta give everybody a fair chance, don't you? Yeah, I guess so. Miss Molly Harris said you wanted to see me. Yeah, that's right. What about? I'll tell you in a minute. Uh, how old are you? Nine. You're eight and a half. How'd you know? Uh, well, I got my ways. What grade are you in? The third. Honest. You know what grade I was in when I was your age? What? The seventh. At eight and a half? Uh, well, I, I I was in the sixth anyways. You was in the sixth grade at eight and a half? Well, I, I, well, I wasn't far from it. They tell me that you're a Wyatt Earp man. Yeah. Did you ever meet Wyatt Earp? Yeah, I see them once or twice. Is he the toughest man you ever saw? In the bunch I run with, we'd have spanked Wyatt Earp's britches with his own pistol. Really? Why, the real tough ones laugh at Earp. Who's the toughest one you ever saw? You mean the real toughest? Yes, sir. Besides you. Well, I guess I've never seen anybody tougher than a fellow you got right here in your own hometown. A fellow by the name of Mark Strett. You mean old Softy? Softy? He's the toughest man I ever met. But Softy don't even carry a gun. He don't have to, son. He can handle them barehanded. Don't you ever tangle with that old softy? No, sir. What's the matter? Uh, nothing. What are you looking at, then? I'm looking at you. Uh, because now I'll, I'll tell you what I wanted to see you about. You see them kids out front? Yes, sir. Why ain't they in school? We came down to see what's going on. Yeah, well, they got no business hanging around in front of a saloon. I want you to get them out of there. I don't know if I can or not. What do you mean you don't know whether you can or not? When I asked for somebody to handle this situation, why, Miss Harris told me you were the smartest kid in town. That's why I sent for you. Well, I'll try. Don't try. You do it. You get them boys out of there the way Mark Strett would. You understand? Yes, sir. That's a good boy. I guess we picked out the right fella after all. Well, he's all right, lady. You got a good boy there. Thank you. Well, I'll be going now. Bye, ma'am. You take good care of yourself. Goodbye. Goodbye, son. Goodbye, Mr. Ringo. I hope I see you again sometime. Well, what about next year? Will you really? You'll be watching for me. 
A year from today. Goodbye. Sorry, Jimmy. Sorry for what? A year ain't nothing I can ride out for that long. Look out for her, will you? You bet. Much obliged to you, Mark. Oh, that's all right, partner. You may make it at that. I got two deputies all over town watching for those three guys to show up. <laughs> you take pretty good care of me, don't you? I'm thinking about how nice and quiet the street looks. I aim to keep it that way. Come on. All clear. Get going, cowboy. Hold it, hold it. Well, what's the matter? Coming around the corner. Those look like any three brothers you know. Well, they sure do. But they ain't wearing guns. Look behind them. <laughs> Your deputy looks right good holding that rifle on him. Charlie! Take him down to jail and lock him up until morning. Well, Jim, for the first time, I'm beginning to hope. Well, you just keep on hoping. You tell Peggy I'll be back. I'll, uh, I'll walk with you to your horse. Thanks, Mark, for everything you've done. Play it straight, Jimmy. And keep it that way. So long, Mark. Bye, Jimmy. Go! Bromley! Uh, Jimmy! Jimmy! Hunt Bromley got Ringo! Hunt Bromley got Ringo! Hold on to Bromley! Just hold him right where he is! The doc will be here in a minute. He'll be here in a minute, Jim. Just lay still. Lay still, you'll be all right. That, that boy. Hunt. We got him. We got him, son. He ain't getting away with it. No. I... I drew first. I was ahead of him. I seen it, Jimmy. His gun was drawed when he braced you. I seen who drew first. You heard what I said, Mark. I drew first. Now don't argue with me. I know what I'm doing. I'm right here, Ringo. You don't have to do me no favors, Pappy. I was doing you a favor. Let him hang you right now. And get it over with. I don't want you to get off. That light... I want you to go on being a big, tough gunny. I want you to see what it means to have to live like a big, tough gunny. Don't thank me yet, partner. You'll see what I mean. Just wait. Just you. Wait. Jimmy. Jimmy! All right, boys. Take over. Bromley, you're doing the talking. Come on! Hunt. You've been asking for this for a long time. Now you look here. Don't, don't say this. anything, Hunt. Don't you talk to me. Don't say one word to me. You can't don't talk this. to me, I tell you. I'll kill you if you do. Do you understand me? Now, you stay where you are and listen to me, you yellow belly. Ringo's fixed you good. And you're going to get it exactly like you gave it to him. Because there's a thousand cheap, dirty, crooked little squirts like you waiting right now for the chance to kill the man that killed Jimmy Ringo. But it ain't going to be here, sonny. Not in my territory, it ain't. So now, go on, get going. And I know you're not comfortable without your gun. So there. There it is. Now you go get killed someplace else. You smart, ain't you? Too big a man to carry a gun, ain't you? Who's smart now? You start saying you... Why, pray, you little... Thing. You'll you... never be fit to shine the boots of Jimmy Ringo. <laughs> oh, you... And that's just the beginning, tough boy. Oh, 
sorry, but there ain't no more room, Mrs. Walsh. Ain't another seat in the place except what they held for the family. And there ain't no family. Is Mark inside? Yes, sir, he's inside. Will you tell him that Mrs. Ringo would like to see him? Mrs. Ringo. Mrs. Jimmy Ringo. And his little boy. Yes, sir, Mrs. Ringo. Peggy. Yes, Ma. Come in, Mrs. Ringo. Thank you, Gregory Peck, for a most exciting performance. We wish to congratulate you for having received the Silver Spurs Award at Reno two weeks ago for the best Western performance of 1950. Our star will return in just a moment, ladies and gentlemen. Next week, the Screen Director's Playhouse will bring you an adaptation of a hilarious comedy starring Bob Hope. And on June the 21st, our adaptation will be DOA, starring Edmund O'Brien with Peggy Castle and Screen Director Rudolph Mattei. Now, here again is tonight's star, Gregory Peck. In the motion picture industry, ladies and gentlemen, you hear and read a great deal about stars and not nearly enough about directors. I know how much they mean to a picture, so I'm more than happy to introduce the new president of the Screen Directors Guild, Mr. George Sidney. Thank you, Greg. I am sincerely glad to have this opportunity to say a word to the loyal audience of our Screen Directors Playhouse. This program fills a great need in our industry, and it affords deserved recognition to the director and the opportunity for the director to meet the public he serves. On behalf of the members of the Screen Directors Guild of America, I want to thank you. Yes, you, our radio audience, and all the wonderful people who have helped make this program possible. Good night. Good night, George. Gunfighter was presented through the courtesy of 20th Century Fox, producers of On the Riviera in Technicolor, starring Danny Kaye, Gene Tierney, and Kareem Calvay. Included in tonight's cast were Byron Kane, Ted DeCorsia, Sam Edwards, Grace Lennard, Tom Holland, Ruth Parrott, Betty Lou Gerson, and Jeffrey Silver. Wally Mayer played Mark Streff. Gregory Peck may soon be seen in the Warner Brothers production, Captain Horatio Hornblower. The Gunfighter was adapted for radio by Nat Wolf. Screen Director's Playhouse is under the production supervision of Howard Wiley and is directed by Bill Karn. This is Jimmy Wallington speaking and inviting you to listen again next week when the Screen Director's Playhouse will bring you an hilarious comedy starring Bob Hope. Listen again next week to Screen Directors Playhouse, one of the weekly features on NBC's all-star festival of comedy, music, mystery, and drama. We invite you to listen tomorrow evening for Herbert Marshall, returning as The Man Called X, the Friday night feature of the all-star festival. Tomorrow, The Man Called X and the amazing Mr. Malone on NBC. NBC.